Hello everyone and welcome back to another space weather video. My name is Alexis of Ascension Diaries and I need to inform you of a few interesting things today. Yesterday we had an X 2.87 solar flare that happened right after I uploaded my video warning that there was already the most powerful solar flare of the month happening and then we leveled up and went ahead and got like the 47th most powerful solar flare in the last 50 years. So something like that. So I'm going to show you that data really quick and show you the Aurora Borealis that's actually happening right now in Alaska. So very exciting that the the Geophysical Institute of University of Alaska Fairbanks has this live webcam show, showing their sky. Obviously, you can see that it's a specific type of lens. So it's giving you kind of a globe effect. It's very cute. They even have a little bit of a shine on there to make it look like a crystal ball, this particular info. So it's very pretty. Obviously, you can see that the sky is green. I want to show you that. But if you can watch carefully, the, the image is actually going to move around because the aurora, obviously, is constantly moving. And so it's just wonderful. I never get to open this and actually physically get to see the aurora on this camera. So I'm very excited to show you that and share this resource with you. There is a resource that's missing. That Enlil spiral is down. Can't find that. Here's the evidence of that solar flare. You can see that just in the 15th or 14th into the 15th, there's this square. One, two, three major solar flares yesterday. Into the 15th, we've already had another near X-class flare today. So if you're like, oh, it feels like they keep coming. You're right. They certainly are. Solar, solar ham is a great uh, resource that I use all the time. Their Twitter's trying to explain the solar wind shift that happened as well about, you know, several hours ago as we're watching these wave after wave come towards the planet. They start to kind of cannibalize. They, they mess with each other's physics sometimes. So it causes a bizarre reaction sometimes on the receiving end here. But here is that near X class flare we just got about six hours ago. And here is that X 2.8 that we got in the last 24 hours. Again, you can see how explosive it is. The sunspot group that's responsible for this behavior is this one in particular, AR3514, this particular cluster. As the cluster moves to the right-hand side of the sun and begins to rotate away, its connection to us, the Earth itself, it severs basically. So I think that's a part of what that bright flash is, is actually the electromagnetic field of that spot and our planet engaging which is really cool. This particular graphic also shows how large the explosion outside of the sun, you can see it's many suns wide, this very clear cloud of plasma that came off of that particular X flare. So we have a lot of solar wind on the way. That's just all I'm seeing right here. <laughs> and the pressure is going to increase as we get closer to the solstice. So if you're planning on going out and being active, you may struggle with that because the pressure of the solar wind from all this is going to be holding you down a little bit. So if it's, it's okay for you to cancel and stay home and um, uh, use your energy to replenish yourself and prepare for the rest of this winter season. If you have my permission, because here it is right here, this is not going to be easy to body. The next few days the quick stuff and it happens instantly that instant high vibrational stuff usually feels pretty good but that denser stuff that takes a long time to kind of get here up to three days that's the stuff i'm discussing right now so let's move on to our other resource space weather live this is their tweet yesterday this is the impact zone of that x2 that we had nearly an x3 i'll be honest with you it was very close so in my eyes they may be fudging the numbers a little bit to make it look a little less powerful. I've noticed that is a very common theme. So let's just say maybe it was an X3. Let's be honest. It was a, it was a lot. Uh, very nice. Here is the footage of that flare again, that X2. Beautiful. So you can see the behavior. It's actually almost like a huge crevasse actually opens. And then this flare comes out. And I'll be honest with you, it gave me very feminine energy, if you know what I mean. It was very much like a birth was coming out of the sun. That's what it looked like on my end. So here's the calendar over the last, obviously, 14 days. We have our new flare, our big guy, who is now leading the way, our X2.7. It's saying here, even though it's a 2.8, so I don't know what they're doing, I'll be honest with you. They keep lowering the number. Here's literally the top 
50 solar flares in history. So if you need to watch this closely, here are the dates. This is the years. Okay, so the most powerful one on record we have is from 2003 with an X28+. plus. Okay, if I do recall this correctly, this was not an Earth-facing flare. They watched it happen on the backside of the sun. So they couldn't quite figure out what it was classed as, which is why it has a plus. I think this has happened multiple times in history, 2003, 2001, 2003, 2005, 2001, 2003. Wow, 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, very powerful years apparently for the sun. Then we got a 1997 here holding it down on plot 7 with an X9. So let's scroll all the way down through history if you could slowly follow me here, keeping your eye on the year we're looking for 2023. You see a lot of year 2000s. That early decade, that early few years was very intense with the sun. And obviously I was still a child in school, so I couldn't be tracking this. But now looking back, I'm like, wow, very impressive. So where are we at? I think I accidentally went past it. So we're at an X2. Here we are. They're classing it an X2.7, which is silly to me. I don't think that's accurate, but here it is. We are at number 46 of most powerful flares in history that we have, according to Space Weather Live, you know, what's the word? Their data, basically. Uh, archives is the word I'm looking for. So let's look in just this solar cycle now. Solar cycle 25, where are we ranked now? Okay, so we are at X2.7. That was number one. Oh, no way. Are they saying that that was the most powerful one of this year, of this solar cycle? Wow, I can't believe I didn't catch that until now. Okay, so great. The one we just had yesterday is now classed as the most powerful solar flare of solar cycle 25. So that'll be the title of this video for sure. Heads up on that data significance, okay? <laughs> Now, what are we going to get from that? Obviously, we're still getting Aurora. <laughs> okay, look how bright that is. That's pretty impressive. You, for a girl who grew up in the north, I do a little know a little bit about this. And these are some impressive Aurora going on up there. <laughs> and this may not be giving you the best idea about what actually is going on. And I have a feeling the data is now going to try and hide what's going on because we really did win yesterday. And it, I, now I know why I've been working so darn hard. So here's footage of that flash again. We love the solar, solar flare flashes because the way they capture them with the type of lens they use, it flares off in these six directions. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's like a six-pointed star, which is really cool. In my opinion, it just looks really neat. And I love the way that we've been able to capture these. Fantastic. So again, we're expecting the storm to begin hitting now, the 15th, into the 17th, 18th, okay? This is an official source. Watch the solar wind on the hour. Come here. Check it out. It's almost at 400. Things are going to start getting uncomfortable. I have the evidence and the experience to confidently tell you that. So if you thought you were having a high today and yesterday, I'm hoping you got some productive things done, got some things in the mo in moving forward because you're going to now experience <laughs> the rest of it. In this particular footage I wanted to show you today was there was literally like a, a fist or a foot that came out of the crown of the sun after that X flare. So here we're going to wait. We're waiting for it. We're waiting for it. That's the lead up to it. There is the X flare and boom, there goes the foot out of the top. <laughs> I got a little closer and when you get closer, it doesn't look like a foot or a fist as much coming out of it. But it really caught me off guard. I don't normally see shapes and whatever. Like I said, I tend to go more masculine brain. But wow, I was like, that's a foot <laughs> coming out the top. Here it goes. Woo. To me, I don't know. It's a little bit out there. But I had to show it to you anyways. Let's take a look. Here's the wonky solar wind. We don't have to cover that. Here's that giant sunspot group. It's still going to be very active. We could get another X flare today. I'll be honest with you. The conditions are still there for that, in my opinion. Is the Russian charts reacting? Earth's electromagnetic field reacting in, in unison? Not according to Russia, in my opinion. Not getting that kind of feedback. Italy actually just blacked out the footage, if you, don't, if you remember that. So we lost footage from that particular event it's just basically fudging whenever those x flares hit they're like you know what we don't want to scare anybody 
<laughs> is kind of the impression. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just leave that normal stuff. But when the X-Flare hits, just erase that. Um, we also erased the South African um, resource, unfortunately. As soon as I start talking about it, there it goes, from the heartmath.org resource. And a lot of people ask me, do you know HeartMath? Do you like HeartMath? And I have to always grimace and be like, ugh. HeartMath has had some of the worst consistency with their with their research, the public side research, and it's been almost impossible to use them as a resource compared to even Russia. It's been kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you. So if you're from HeartMath and you're hearing this, you probably know why it's embarrassingly being blocked and you probably signed some papers about it. So I don't need to, I don't need to know. It's obvious to everybody. So thankfully you guys um, gave us a tiny bit of evidence to show us what you were about to do next, which was silence the population from knowledge. <laughs> Is that a little extreme? Maybe. Are we going into coherence? Definitely. We're going out of coherence a little more, actually. Like I said, as the West Coasters wake up, this pops up into lack of coherence because everybody is now trying to maybe have a coffee and mess with their whole nervous system with a you know a little bit of drug induced bean juice in the morning and some sugar so their brain stopped working unfortunately so if you're in the process of getting rid of all that stuff out of your body you're taking chlorella spirulina and then you're taking some bentonite clay or zeolite or charcoal so you're pulling that stuff out. Turmeric milk, guys. Get that stuff out of your body, please. Have some spring water <laughs> and an apple. Like I said, it's going to make pretty much the same impact on you <laughs> as a, a thing of coffee. You would be surprised. All right, I think that is today's episode. Those of you who haven't checked out ConsciousCrypto.info, crypto, please do. We are accepting new students. You guys have been watching the markets and the response to all this. Holy crap, are the markets responding? It's insane to watch. I barely can keep up, but I do know when markets are about to do something. And I've got all that, at least amongst all these resources I'm smashing together to make some sense of all this. We can say that markets are probably going to do something different because uh, this is the most powerful flare of the solar cycle. So let's just say that's my theory pretty sure no one can argue with that and enjoy the rest of your day i'll be around i love you guys very much i'll see you on the next one